to bless his word from the Old Testament to New Testament uh, Christians. I want to talk to you about speed uh, tonight. And um, some of you have kept up with us being so close to Daytona. Some of you kept up with the speed of cars uh, over the years. And uh, I, I used to joke about it when we were up in uh, Lancaster, South Carolina, that it didn't take my wife too long to get acquainted with all the local policemen uh, there. And I'll just leave that for you to figure out uh, what I'm talking about. But, uh, but some of you are more interested in this than others. But there's actually a place in the, in the Bible where we read about a man who was recognized by his wild rider. His wild ride. He got with it. He left the dust storm behind him. And if you have 2 Kings chapter 9, we're going to begin reading at verse 16. Would you stand with me, please, in reverence for the reading of the scripture before the message? 2 Kings chapter 9, beginning with verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 16. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there. And Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel. And he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take an horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. Amen. And Joram said, I don't know if any of you ever heard anybody driving like Jehu, but it used to be an old saying. Back when people were uh, affected by the Bible more than they are today. And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And they went out against Jehu and met him in the portion of Naboth the Jezreelite. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. And Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms, and the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chair. We're going to pause our scripture reading there and use verse 20 for our thoughts tonight where the Bible says, And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. I want us to go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and I want you to think with me about this, because all of us are driving through life. All of us are on a journey. And some of us need to pay attention to some of the traffic signals and signs along the way, and we need to be conscious of where we're going and how fast we're going. If you will, bow your heads for prayer and we'll ask God to bless. Heavenly Father, thank you for these faithful ones who've come to church for our midweek service. Thank you for our time of singing and prayer, fellowship. Now I pray, dear Lord, that you'd work in the hearts of the people who are here, like someone's already uh, mentioned, uh, that uh, this is a blessing for those of us who are saved and we're aware that there may be people who came into this building tonight who do not know you, who do not know the wonderful redemption that is in Jesus Christ, who merely have a form of godliness but denying the power 
thereof, so I pray the Holy Spirit would reprove them uh, that they might see their need of the Savior and not be a child of devil, but be born again and become a child of God. And Father, I pray that you'd move in the hearts of your people, blessing, stirring, reviving, correcting, changing, and helping. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated, please? I want to talk to you about Jehu. We actually had somebody come to our church at one time for a little while uh, named Jehu. Jehu is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He wasn't perfect, and he tolerated some things that he shouldn't have had and that cost him the kingdom. But he did some wonderful things. And I've often thought that if there were a Baptist preacher in the Old Testament, and I say that knowing that the only Baptist in the Bible was John, um, the last of the Old Testament prophets, and knowing that the New Testament did not begin or go into effect until the crucifixion of Christ, the, the uh, testator, and making the New Testament go into effect. But if there were, from that time backwards, that there was a, uh, a Baptist preacher uh, that, that uh, I could identify, it would be Jehu. You see, not only did he stand for the Lord and demonstrate zeal for the Lord, but the text says of him, he driveth furiously. And most Baptist preachers I know drive like that. Now when I say that, I have tried to, well, most of my life, be a more defensive driver. Um, I, I probably, just like everybody else, I don't concentrate all the time, you know, like I should, not as careful as I should, but I try to be uh, careful and try to make up for any distraction or whatever by driving a little slower than I might otherwise drive. And I try not to be in a hurry, believing that God's given me exactly enough time I need to do what he wants me to do. Uh, while I, I've got time to, to do it. But many Baptist preachers are known for being fast drivers. I'll never forget that there was a time where I bought a, an automobile that looked just like the automobile of another Baptist preacher yeah. who was known for driving like Jesus. Yeah. And uh, this Baptist preacher just happened to be the Baptist preacher that had led me to the Lord years earlier. And I still to this day am suspicious that I got pulled over one time on 82. You remember 82 going from yep. Albany to Dawson and all through there? Yep. Well, uh, on, the, on the east side of town, I got pulled over and the fellow accused me of going, I forget what it was, but as far as I knew, in my life I'd never gone that fast. <laughs> really, I mean, not, I'm not pass, talk, talking about in passing lane or just goosing it or anything. I don't think I've ever gone that fast. And all I said to the patrol officer when he asked me about uh, you know, what I had to say for myself when he told me what he clocked me at, as I just said, I had no idea I was going that fast. <laughs> you know? And uh, he was nice and called me back to the police station and said he checked my record and everything and that he was just going to make it a, make it, the ticket a warning. But to this day, I suspect that he was still trying to chase down that Baptist preacher that had a car just like mine, who, uh, who had probably driven uh, at that speed that he was saying that I was doing uh, just uh, on a casual day. But at any rate, I do remember that there was a time that uh, I went to a, uh, a pulpit committee meeting. Uh, I'd been pastoring in Sylvester, and, and a friend of mine had uh, resigned his church in Albany, Georgia, he recommended me to the church, and I went over there and talked to the pulpit committee. And, and after it was over, uh, I was driving down a, a road called Mock Road that was kind of like in between a couple of roads that uh, get driven at higher speeds. But Mock Road is a kind of a lonely road there in Albany, and it goes straight for just a long time, and, and uh, not all that much traffic on it. And sure enough, uh, before I knew it, I was going faster uh, than I should uh, on Mock Road. And, and uh, have any of you had that experience where you had a pain in your chin because your, your knee just went up there real quick and hit yourself in the chin getting off of the accelerator pedal? <laughs> Anyhow, it's kind of like that because I saw a, a blue flashing light in the, in the mirror behind me. And, and as I pulled over, a, a lady police officer came up to me and she said, do you know how fast that you were going? And honestly, I didn't have a clue because I've been thinking about the conversation I had 
with those men, and she said, and I believe that she's probably accurate, she said I was going around 55 miles an hour on a road that was marked 35 miles per hour, uh, and in addition to that, it was raining at the time. So uh, I submitted, of course, to it gladly. I, I said I pray for police people and thank God for you. And, um, you know, I didn't invite her to come to church. You know, I felt like I had bad enough testimony already. <laughs> but, um, which at the time, I didn't even know. I was pastoring in, in an adjacent town in Sylvester. But at any rate, I want to use that for the title for the message tonight. Do you know how fast you're going? Do you know how fast you're going? I'll talk to you about some things in the Bible about stopping, starting, slowing down, and speeding up. That's four points. Yeah. <laughs> every hit bad, every hit close. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'll talk to you a little bit about this. Do you know how fast you're going? Each of us is traveling. We're all traveling through life. Yeah. The Bible compares your life to a walk. Yeah. The Bible compares your life to a race. And each one of us is going somewhere. Most people have no idea where they're going, but that's another sermon. What I want to talk to you about tonight is the speed of the journey. If you're not careful, you won't take the time to smell the roses. That's right. If you're not careful, you'll be at the end of your journey before you know it. I remember my dad saying, when he was about my age, I remember my dad saying, I have no right to be this old. <laughs> yeah. He said, I just don't understand how that I got this old so fast. And uh, if you're not careful, you'll be old before you know it. That's right. I want to talk to you about starting, stopping, slowing down, speeding up. <laughs> Number one, there's a time to start. And a lot of people put off doing what God wants them to do. That's right. One of the sins that people commit when, with regard to uh, the speed at which you're going through life is some people just will not start. Have you ever been behind somebody who has stopped at a traffic signal, the light turns green, and you realize they're looking at their cell phone? Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about the folks out there, you know, who expect somebody to move within a half a second of the light turning green. But, you know, you've, you've sat there, and, and uh, some of you know what it's like to wait on somebody to get done with what they're doing on their phone, then when they finally pull out, the lights change back to red. <laughs> so, you're, so you're still there. The Bible says that when Paul reasoned with Felix of, of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. It's Acts chapter 24, verse 25. Uh, Felix's problem was he just wouldn't start. Yeah. Felix's problem was he wanted to think about it. Felix's problem was he was a procrastinator. Felix's problem was he just would not go at the time when God wanted him to go. He would not come to Christ at the time when the Lord wanted him to come to Christ. The Bible says, putting it this way in 2 Corinthians 16, 6 2. It says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Do you know why many people are going to die and go to hell? Because they're going to neglect to do what they ought to do. Amen. They're just going to put off getting saved. Do you know what you have to do to go to hell? Yeah. One of those clever tracks I've ever seen had a, had a track that said, what you need to do to go to hell. And when you open the track, it's blank. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're already condemned because you've not believed in the name of the only God, Son of God, John 3, 18 says. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing that you need to do. If you die without trusting Christ, you die under God's condemnation. Yeah. I'm not condemning you. You're already condemned. Right. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten uh, Son of God. Better, you better make, take uh, heed. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. There is time to start. By the way, those of you who are saved, you need to get started serving God just as soon as you get saved. Now, when I got saved, my dad took us out of town the next weekend. But the weekend after that, I got baptized and became a member of Pine Bluff Baptist Church in Albany, Georgia. 
And the idea is that when you get saved, you ought to serve God today. The Bible asks the question, who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? And one of the most famous verses on serving God, Joshua 24, verse 15, Joshua said to the people, choose you this day whom you will serve. Do you remember that? Yeah. Choose you this day whom you will serve. He said, but it's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A lost person needs to start up and trust Christ as Savior. A saved person needs to start up and start serving God immediately. Don't put it off. Serve God today. Yeah. Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Go soul winning today. Lift up your eyes. Look on the fields for their white already to harvest. Point number two. Point number one, there's a time to start. Second thing I want you to think with me about is there's a time to to stop. And you better learn when to stop. There's a, there's a difference, by the way, between stopping and slowing down. i never forget a story that I heard, I don't know if it's real or not, about a, um, about a local cop who pulled over a guy who didn't stop at the stop sign. Kind of rolled through it. And the cop pulled him over. <coughs> And the guy had a bad attitude about everything. To try to sum it up a little bit, finally, he, uh, he got the fella to get out of the car. And, uh, and he didn't want to cooperate with that either. And so he got a hold of him, he opened the door, and he pulled him out of the car. And, and the guy started insulting the policeman. And the policeman just lost it. Yeah. And uh, this fellow just kept complaining, kept saying, you know, you're not going to do it. You're not taking me in. I'm not going all this stuff. And the policeman just lost it. And the policeman hit him. And he hit him again. And he hit him again. And he hit him again. And he about beat the devil out of this guy who was getting such a hard time and wouldn't, wouldn't be willing. Because what the fellow kept saying was, well, the policeman said to him, he said, you didn't stop. The guy said, I slowed down. And the guy said, but you didn't stop. You ran the, the stop sign. He said, I slowed down. I looked both ways. I didn't slow down. He said, but you didn't stop. So this cop started just laying into him, one after the other. And the fellow got a couple licks back, but he was being beat to shred. And then the, then the cop pulled him up after he'd hit him about a dozen times. He said, now listen, buddy. Dude, would you like me to stop or just slow down? <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Yep. There's some things you ought to stop. Yep. You say, well, I'm tapering off. Stop. Yep. Just stop it. If it's wrong, stop it. Amen. Most people don't want to stop. You know what the Bible says about stealing? It says, let him that stole steal no more. You know what the Bible says? It says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. You know what that's about? That's saying, stop! We need to stop living for ourselves. We need to stop licking our wounds. We need to stop looking at other runners in the Christian life, get our focus on Jesus, and just go on down the road as the Lord would have us to. Amen. Amen. Quit your wrongdoing. Amen. Quit your gossiping. Yeah. Quit your uh, criticizing of other people. Yeah. Quit your worldliness. Yeah. Third, yeah. we do need to slow down on some things. That is, there's some things you need to Quit being so hasty about it. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 19, 2, also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And then it says, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Yeah. You need to be careful about making rash decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. How many people have you known that, that regretted that they signed the dotted line? Yeah. Right. Anybody been in the military besides me? <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't regret I didn't regret signing that dotted line, but I've heard of a lot of people who did. Yeah. Right. You know who the hated, most hated people are in the military? It is not the uh, company commander at boot camp. 
is the recruiter. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The most hated guy, as far as occupation goes, in the military is the recruiter. That's right. Not everybody hates him, I'm just saying this, but just overall, if you wanted to find the most hated guy, it's not the CO, it's not the XO, it's, not, it's, it's the recruiter. Yeah. And oh, there's no telling how many people wish they could get back yeah. and have a talk with that recruiter who told him how wonderful it was going to be, how adventuresome it was going to be. We need to slow down. Any of you know anybody that that wishes that they had slowed down before they said I do at the marriage altar. They need to slow down on some things. Amen. One thing I tell you we all need to slow down on is we need to slow down on our words. Amen. Yeah. If there's one thing that's mentioned in the Bible repeatedly, it's that we could all afford to say fewer words yeah. right. than what we say. You know what a fool's voice is known by? A multitude of words. So in a general meeting of people, not talking about where you go to hear a lecture or whatever, but in just a general meeting of people at the kitchen table, at the dining table, restaurant, or wherever, you know how you can recognize the most foolish person in the bunch? <laughs> the one who's doing the most talking. The Bible says even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, right. is counted wise. And, and a man that uh, holdeth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. We need to slow down our words. Do you know that the Bible even indicates we need to be slow and slow down our words when we're praying? Amen. Even when you're praying. You, re you read your Bible. I'm not going to take time to try to give it to you now. I'm just saying there's some times where the Bible says you need to be careful about what you say. <laughs> slow down your words on the phone. Slow down your words in public. You know what the Bible says when, when uh, concerning somebody saying something to you and you are just jumping back with a reply? You need to be careful what you say. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 28, the heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. So a wise man, if you ask him a question, unless it's something that he knew you were going to ask, and he already knows what he was going to ask. The wise man may actually pause a minute before he answers your question. If you're asking him for counsel or asking him a packed question. Another thing we can slow down, afford to slow down. Do you know how fast you're going with it with regard to this? With regard to your mouth? Mouth of the south? Anybody ever called you that? I hope not. We need to slow down our wrath. Our wrath, our anger. Um, we call it we call it out there in, in traffic we call it road rage yeah. but folks get hot they get angry yeah. they get mad and you know what if you if you're somebody who has a short fuse you're stupid yeah. in the Bible the Bible says he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding mm -hmm. a smart person is a person who has a long fuse yeah. count to ten Count from 10 back to zero. Yeah. Do whatever you have to to slow down your wrath. You do not have to jump the gun yeah. and go after somebody with your tongue or anything else. We need to slow down. Another thing we need to slow down is slow down our wickedness. Yeah. If you're thinking about doing wrong, slow down. Right. Don't jump to do something wrong. That's right. You say, well, it's tempting. It's there. Slow down. Hold back. Yeah. You may regret it one day. Amen. You may destroy your family. <laughs> You may destroy your health. You may destroy another Christian. Slow down before you make the wrong move. Yeah. You may destroy a church if you don't slow down and say, wait a minute, I don't think I want to participate in that. Yeah. The Bible says, among the things that God hates in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 18, a heart that devises wicked imaginations and feet that be swift in running to mischief. Yeah. Proverbs 6, 18. Be careful before you pass on that juicy tidbit of information. <laughs> you know what we ought to get for, for some folks in church? We need to get a, a t-shirt for them that says Daily News. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And on the, and on the back side of the shirt, it ought to, ought to say Gossip <laughs> or Gossip Center or Don't Know? Ask Me. <laughs> 
Then another thing that we could consider slowing down, and that is slow down our work. And I'm not talking about being lazy and not getting started on it. I'm just saying being diligent in business. Yeah. Focus. Pay attention to what you're doing. Do it right. Yeah. What do the carpenters say? Yeah. The carpenters say, measure twice. Oh, that way you can cut once. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, if you don't measure twice and cut once, you're going to end up measuring once and having to get a new board out over and over and over. Yeah. And many people have to redo what they've done because they weren't willing to slow down yeah. and do it right. At the judgment seat of Christ, do you know that the Bible doesn't say in 1 Corinthians 3, it doesn't say anything that our works will be tried out by what quantity they are? It doesn't say that every man's work should be tried as to how many he did. It says every man's work should be tried as to what sort. What sort it is. You know what we're talking about when we say what sort? We're talking about quality, not quantity. Any of you loved math when you were a kid? Do you know that most mistakes that were made at school on math tests and math problems were made because somebody got too fast. They went, got in a hurry. Yeah. I remember, um, I remember hearing an officer in the Navy one time. Uh, he was a Christian. His dad was a preacher, and I don't remember how this came up, but he was signing his name to a message in the radio jack or something. And he and I got to talking about being able to recognize who wrote the, you know, their name on the paper. And he, he said something to this effect. He said, you know what I realized? He said, I realized that almost anybody can write legibly if they'd slow down. Uh -huh. well, yeah. That's true. If they'd slow down, yeah. almost anybody can write legibly. Come on now. That one that you look at the signature and you say, I have no idea what that is. Yep. You know how that person wrote that signature? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody seen somebody write like that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, the reason why you couldn't read it is they didn't slow down. Yeah. Slow down in your work so that your quality uh, is good. How fast are you going? Are there some, there's some things that somebody else is going to have to do behind you because you wouldn't pay attention and do a good job? If you're going to do the work of the Lord, you ought to do it with diligence. And be careful even about your walk. Slow down your walk. Um, because the Bible says, He that hastens with his feet, sin it. Be careful to be sure that you're going in the right direction. Especially if you're thinking about changing course. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, right. You're thinking about changing spouses. Yeah. Changing churches. <clears throat> changing careers. Mm -hmm. Changing your house that you live in. Be careful. Slow down. He that hastens with his feet in it. Then let me give you one more thought, and that is we do need to speed up some things. Yeah. We do need to speed up some things. Some people are dangerous because they're so slow. Mm -hmm. Now I realize that if you're one of those that goes too fast, everybody's going too slow for you. Okay? <laughs> but we do need to speed up some things. When the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be slow to speak and slow to wrath, before that it says, Let every man be swift to hear. So there's some things that we ought to be ready to do at the gate, at the changing of the light. Some people need to be ready to speed up. Some Christians are going so slow that you hardly could tell that they're moving. Yeah. I saw a sign that it said, uh, it was something like this. It was at a workplace, and it was asking for people who were still alive to please move. <laughs> at the workplace. There's a sign up there in the factory. Huh? And it said, <laughs> because some of our medical personnel are really having a hard time <laughs> deciding who's really in danger because their heart has stopped or their breath has stopped. So those of you who are still alive, would you please move? Yes. Okay? Uh, some people's favorite express, favorite song to sing during invitation time is I shall not be moved. Anybody heard that one? <laughs> yeah. I shall not be moved. Come on, preacher. See what you can do with me. I shall not be moved. Yeah. You need to speed up some of you and start uh, start living for Jesus. 
We need to speed up our listening, according to James 1.19. Let every man be swift to hear. We need to speed up our learning. Do you know there's some people who've been saved for 10 years Amen. and are not able to teach a new convert three things about living for Jesus. Right. Doesn't know where a verse is to show that person where he's supposed to, that he's supposed to go to church. Yeah. If you've been going to church for 10 years and you don't know a verse that talks about going to church, you don't know a verse that talks about giving tithes and offerings, yeah. you don't know a church that you don't know a verse in the Bible talks about studying the Bible. You don't know a verse in the Bible talks about praying. Uh, listen, it's time for you to speed up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You need to grow up. Yeah. Paul talked to the Corinthians like that. He talked to the Hebrews like that. He said, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Speed up. Yeah. I try to pace myself. Let me say to you, some of you need to get started reading your Bibles. Amen. Amen. Speed up from what you're doing. Amen. One verse a week ain't going to get it done. Amen. So I read my Bible, preacher. I read a verse today. Yeah. Well, God bless your little pee picking heart. <laughs> I'm glad you read a verse today. Did you read it in between commercials of the television show you watched? You read one verse there? Good for you. <laughs> You know what? If you go to a Bible leading church like this one, I'm telling you that if you will pace yourself and do right, right. then I'm telling you that in a few years, you can be you can be grounded in the Word of God. Right. You can be an experienced soul winner. You can know something about prayer. And you know something about holiness and separation. If you decide to do something about it, but if you're going to be like the fella who, you know, bought his membership at the gym in January and got to looking at himself in July and wondered why he's not looking any better yeah. and said he's got to go down to that gym and complain. <laughs> Wonder what he's doing wrong. Well, the first thing he's done, he hadn't done, been there between January and July. <laughs> and so he's not going to see anything happen. Listen, folks, you need to speed up your, your reading of your Bible, learning, doc. take notes. Go to every service, and when something has been said that you need to check out when you get home, write it down. Yeah. If something has stirred your heart, write it down. Pass it on. Yeah. I was thankful to, to hear from one of our members this past week that they've tried to pass on some of the messages uh, that they heard during the day to some of their family members. Yeah. Tried to tell them some of what had been, uh, what had been preached good thing you do is, is come to all the services. Yeah. Amen. 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 Come to Sunday school. Amen. If you want to really keep growing, attend our Bible Institute. Amen. I promise you, you can get grounded in the Word of God. Yeah. We need to speed up leading people to the Savior. People are dying right and left. That's right. We need to get out there and try to witness to them. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Matthew 9, 37. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Ecclesiastes 11, 4, which is basically saying, if you keep waiting for the right environment, if you keep waiting for the right time, you'll never go. That's right. Just go. Speed up. There are time, times when you need to slow down. Amen. There are times when you need to stop. There are times when you need to start. Amen. Are you doing what God would have you do? How fast are you going? Would you stand with me, please? Heads bowed. We're going to have an invitation.